Hello and welcome to another video on system software for A-Level. This will be Lesson 7, Virtual Machines. Software written for one computer system will not run on another computer system. For example, a copy of Microsoft Office will not run on a computer with, say, a Linux distro installed on it. A PlayStation 4 exclusive game cannot run on a PC or an Xbox. However, it is possible to write a program that has the same functionality as a physical computer. We call such programs virtual machines. A common use of virtual machines is to run operating systems within another operating system. We might do this because a program is needed that will not run on the host operating system. Or it might be because it offers a convenient way to test a program being developed on multiple platforms. So you have the idea that you're running, say, Windows 10, but inside of Windows 10 you're running a virtual machine running, say, Linux Ubuntu, or Mac OS, or another type of operating system. And that allows you to run and test software that won't actually work on your real computer, but will work on this purely virtual machine that you're running on top of your physical computer. So here we've got a screenshot. This is running Mac OS. And inside Mac OS, we're running Windows 7, Windows 8.1, and Windows 10. So maybe you're a software developer, you have a Mac computer, and you want to test your software on different versions of Windows. You can do that without actually having to have a physical machine running Windows. You can do all from within your Mac OS using virtualization. So advantages of virtual machines. Well, you can run all replications not compatible with newer operating systems. You can run multiple operating systems on the same computer. Virtual machines are very easy to copy and back up. If there's a problem, reverting to the backup is simple. So if the program you're running crashes, or maybe you're worried the program you're going to run has a virus or another nasty bit of software, you can run it on a virtual machine. If it does something bad, it's easy just to wipe the VM and start again. Another advantage is that web hosting companies can create and sell many virtual servers within a single physical server. So the idea here is that a whole physical server devoted to one business, one client, probably isn't economically viable. They're not going to use 100% of that server. There's going to be a lot of wasted resources. It's going to be expensive. However, you can then divide that physical server into a series of virtual servers, each to serve a different client, and that's going to be a lot more profitable, and it's going to maximize your available resources. It is for these reasons that many organizations are virtualizing their virtual infrastructure making their servers a group of virtual machines running from a cluster of physical machines. So virtualization, keyword here, is the process of creating a virtual machine. Just in case you spot that in an exam question, that's what it means. So again, we got that screenshot here. We got three physical servers divided into a series of different virtual servers, each running different apps, different operating systems, and that we maximizing how much you can use of all your computer hardware. There are some disadvantages, however, to running virtual machines. Running a VM requires overheads from the host machine in terms of CPU usage and memory. And some programs may run more slowly under a virtual machine just because they have less physical resources to supply them. Clearly, you cannot run a program in a virtual machine that requires resources greater than the host machine possesses. So you only have a limited amount of memory, a limited amount of CPU speed, a limited graphics card. You can't exceed that through the magic of virtual machine software. It's limited by the actual physical processing of that host machine. And of course, software running on a VM must still be properly licensed. So that may not be a problem for an individual home user, but if you're running a big business, if you're running lots of copies of Windows uh, or Microsoft Office on virtual machines, you still have to pay for them. Another common use of virtual machines is for interpreting intermediate code. So this is a little bit different from the other examples, but it's quite interesting. 
bit of coding uh, here. So when programs are compiled to machine code, we should know that code will only run on processors with the same instruction set. An alternative is to use an interpreter, but this is slow and means the source code is freely available. Intermediate code offers a compromise between these two approaches. So here the compiler converts the source code into something called bytecode. This isn't machine code, but it is a much more efficient representation than the original source code. Because it isn't machine code, it can't be run directly on a processor. Instead, a virtual machine is used to read the code. Any device with this virtual machine can read and run this intermediate code. This means that code can be highly portable. As hardware becomes cheaper and more powerful, virtual machines are likely to become more commonplace. So Java is one of the classic examples of this idea. You write your Java source code, but you're not trying to run this Java source code on lots of different machines because they're not going to be compatible. Instead, you compile it into this kind of intermediate stage, and then we use the magic of the Java virtual machine to run that on PCs, mobile phones, smart TVs, all kinds of other devices. And this means the Java code is kind of write once, read anywhere. And when Java came out in the 1990s, that was his big selling point. It was incredibly portable. And subsequently, a lot of other languages kind of followed the same sort of development model. So a little bit of a summary here. A VM, a virtual machine, is a program designed to fully simulate a computer, but in software. However, of course, a virtual machine still requires an original physical host computer to run on. There can be many virtual machines running on a single host. And before you ask, yes, you can get VMs running inside of VMs, running inside of VMs, running on the original host computer. There are VMs written to emulate the hardware of a computer. And there are virtual machines designed to run intermediate code from a specific computer language, for example, Java. Running a virtual machine allows multiple operating systems to run on the same host computer. And there are both free and commercial virtualization packages available, depending on your needs. All right, I think that's everything we need to know about virtual machines just now. Good luck with your studies in the future.